Custer State Park was the highlight of our travel to South Dakota's Black Hills this summer. This park thinks it's a national park, and many visitors can't believe that it isn't. We were just so glad we were able to spend so much time exploring it. On this second episode from Custer State Park, we're going to show you why this should be on the top of your bucket list of places to see. I'm Jamie, and this is Roaming with Rosie. Seventy-one thousand acres of lakes, towering trees, and creeks framed by huge granite outcroppings make up today's Custer State Park in South Dakota's Black Hills. It's visited by up to 6,000 elk and numerous other species ranging from black bears to donkeys, giving it one of the most widely diverse wildlife ecosystems in the world. But the park is home to about 1,400 bison, which are one of the biggest draws for visitors. The first herd of 36 was donated in 1914 by rancher Scotty Phillip to what would soon become Custer State Park. Today, we were off on foot to tackle the ranger-recommended Cathedral Spires Trail, where we would see more of these animals along with some amazing rock formations. One obstacle for us was that this was Sturgis Bike Week, and motorcycles rule the roads from the Badlands in the east to Wyoming's Devil's Tower in the west. Crossing the road from the parking area to the trailhead was our biggest challenge, as motorcycles just kept on coming and seemed oblivious of pedestrians. Considered a challenging trail with a starting elevation of 6,100 feet, climbing to 6,600 feet in just one and a half miles, it's popular for good reason. Today's Wednesday, one of the last days of the Sturgis event. We're at Custer State Park, so it's pretty far south from Sturgis. That didn't make a difference. All the hogs are back today, and they're noisy, and they're like ants everywhere, and the exhaust is really irritating for my throat and stuff, but we really want to do this trail, and we had to wait through a couple days of rain which is probably why everyone else is here too. There was a couple days of rain. So we're doing the Cathedral Spires Trail. Some rate it moderate, some rate it strenuous, but we watched enough videos. We think we can do it and we brought Dexter. So let's check it out. Lots and lots and lots of flowers. There's raspberries, wild raspberries. Look at these little teeny tiny pine cones. Look at them. Look at just little tiny perfect pine cones. How cute. Yeah, this is what we worried about for him. Tell him to take it slow. Go slow, Dexter. He is no, but he's being smart. He's negotiating and navigating the best parts. Good job, buddy. He's coming without you. I'm Dexter, King of the Hill. We came from down there.
We've done nothing but ascend the whole time. And we're almost to where the trail divides. It's just spectacular. Right now I say it's worth it. We haven't tried to go down yet. That's going to probably be just as hard. Gravity and all. So there's actually a trail four, number four, not four miles. We're on the Cathedral Spires Trail. Like on this plateau, a valley of the spires, if you will. How cool. The point of this trail is to get up to this area where you are surrounded by these needles all the way up. It's so cool. Get it. Right yeah. behind me. Yep. Slow walk, really slow. Oh, I see. Yep. It's not too far, but there's a little bit more of this to do, but it's worth it. From the day it opened in 1919, Custer State Park was meant to attract tourists who would arrive by automobiles. Because of this, the park is also known for its spectacular scenic drives with amazing tunnels carved into them. These routes, built between 1922 and 1933, provide travelers several opportunities to see not only the park, but other landmarks in the Black Hills. On our last episode, we showed you the Needles Highway. This time, it's the 17-mile Iron Mountain Road with three tunnels of varying heights and widths. There are 314 curves and 14 switchbacks, so take your Dramamine if you're prone to motion sickness. The road, which begins outside the park on its southern end, is a work of art in itself. The highway connects Custer State Park and Mount Rushmore National Monument and passes through some of the most beautiful scenery in the Black Hills.
two of the tunnels are purposely built to frame Mount Rushmore where work had begun during the same time period that this highway was. Engineers once said that this is a road that can't be built, but that didn't stop Governor Peter Norbeck, who planned the highway by actually walking the route and directing its construction. He famously said, this is not meant to be a superhighway. To do the scenery justice, you should drive no more than 20 miles per hour, and to do it full justice, you should get out and walk. The road is also famous for the pigtail bridges that allow travelers to quickly drop or gain elevation. The oldest town in the Black Hills, Custer is located just outside the west entrance to Custer State Park. Our first drive through of it was during the days leading up to Sturgis Bike Week. This town really decks itself out and puts out the welcome mat to visitors arriving on two or three wheels. It was way too busy for our taste at that time, but I was determined to capture these amazing buffaloes I saw throughout the town. Each is a different theme and most feature local scenery. They were created as a local art project and are now owned by residents in Custer. There's a little log cabin across from the 1881 Courthouse Museum that's considered the oldest known building still in existence in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Dr. Daniel Flick began to build the 24 foot by 16 foot cabin in 1875, just as Custer City was getting its start. However, at the same time, the U.S. Army was ordered to remove all non-native people from the Black Hills. Dr. Flick and miners who had settled in Custer were forced to walk to Fort Laramie. Shortly after, Captain Edwin Pollock finished the building and set up his office to settle into what is now Custer. 
later, Captain Jack Crawford moved into the cabin, and it was about that same time that Dr. Flick returned from Fort Laramie to reclaim his house. Flick ordered Captain Crawford out, and when he refused to leave, the good doctor threw the intruder's belongings out onto the street. This dispute became the first civil lawsuit in Custer County. The miners' court ruled in Dr. Flick's favor, and Dr. Flick moved back into the home. He and his wife lived in the cabin and treated patients there from 1876 until the early 1900s when they moved to Rapid City. In 1999, the then 125-year-old structure was suffering from water damage along the foundation. When workers lifted the cabin up to replace them, they found several of the foundation logs had been hollowed out and two pistols and an old shotgun were found to have been hidden in the log foundation. Those firearms are presently on display in the 1881 Courthouse Museum. Due to rainy weather and crowds from Sturgis, after our first week, we felt we hadn't really experienced the Black Hills. Because we travel with only a few committed dates and reservations, we're able to flex our travels and stay somewhere longer if we want to. And we did just that, and in upcoming episodes from the Black Hills, we'll share more of the area with and without those crowds. Hey Roamers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below. As well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya!